Hello, I am Kmit and today's video is a bit different, but it was often requested that I show you guys my particular workflow for making 3D environments. My probably most popular scenes are the desert and the tower environment, and with this new scene I want to share many of my insights. This video is also part of the third Go Go Do Jam, which starts on May 27th and it should kickstart your 3D level creation skills. In this video I'm gonna show you my workflow for creating decent 3D environments as quickly as possible and from scratch. We will start to turn any artwork from 2D concept to a 3D block out, then to a textured scene and lastly to a finished real time 3D environment. I will show you lots of tricks in Blender and in Godot for you to try out in the jam or for your own personal projects. And if you want to learn more about the Go Go Do Jam, I highly recommend you to check out their webpage and their Twitter. You can use for your own 3D scene your own artworks or any other artwork you like. In my case, I use this certain artwork which I found on ArtStation. I linked the picture and the artist in the description if you are interested to see more of his work. For now, we will start with a rough block out of our 3D scene in Blender. This will help us to get a rough estimate of the total shape and the composition of the scene. Moreover, I add the human model to get the overall size relations and the proportions right. To ensure that the final scene matches up with the composition of the concept, I've used it as a background image for the camera and then started playing around with the height, perspective and rotation of the camera all in relation to the few shapes we already place in our 3D environment. And as soon as the picture lands up with the 3D scene, we can start placing more basic shapes and more assets. To make things, to make things look right and to have correct scales in the 3D environment, we require some back and forth between camera and perspective view. We need to move things around, resize them and compare them with the concept art again and again and so on. But in the end we will have a rough block out of our scene which we can't iterate on. With our basic block out done we can now start to iterate our simple shapes and add more and more details to the scene as well as new assets. To create the bridge and its arcs we will quickly form out a cylinder to get this shape. We will use the array modifier to duplicate them fast and use the boolean modifier to cut the arc shape out of our prior cube shape bridge. We will also use the array modifier for the bridge's handrail. The same applies to the handrail on the round platform but for this we will use a little trick to place them in a circle. For this we can use the array modifier again, but use an empty as an object offset. So if we now rotate the center placed empty, we can change the offset of our, hand of our handrail in a circle. Moreover, we need to shape a column out of a cube by just extruding its top face with different scaled values. For the windows on the cylinder platform, we can use a common technique by using a photo from a similar window and use it as our reference. To use a reference photo for complex meshes is very helpful and eases the process a lot, especially if you are new to 3D modeling. Additionally, the mirror modifier can save some time since we only need to create one half of a symmetrical window. As soon as we have shaped the window, we will add it to the platform the same way as for the handrail. Now we will rework the two statues which are visible in the background of the artwork. For this we will use an already created human model with an armature system attached to it. There are many free base models online if you don't have one. In the first step, we will set the pose of the model similar to the one in the artwork. To give the statue more appeal, we will use the cloth simulation to determine its shape. 
For this, we firstly need to enable collisions on the human mesh. Secondly, the cloth will be a subdivided plane with enabled cloth or soft body properties. If we start the simulation, we can see the cloth wrapping on the model's body. Since the result is simulated, we need to tweak the cloth parameters and hope for good RNG to get a great looking result. Lastly, when we are happy with the shape of our fabric, we need to apply the cloth modifier tab for our particular simulation frame. And in the last few steps, I created the rest of the room and this is the current result for now. So regarding textures, I personally don't texture paint my meshes anymore, since it takes an insane amount of time for a proper textured mesh. Instead, I started to use Blender's integrated checker texture, which helps to see the current UV maps of our objects. And with that, we can also later assign different materials to our assets. Since most UVs got weirdly displaced and stretched during the editing, we need to re-unwrap these UVs. For this, we will use the cube projection on all objects and try to orient ourselves on the checker textures. We need to make sure that the UVs are not stretched anymore and that the grid pattern is not too small nor too big. I also decided to add big bricks on the walls. This can be done very quick if known how. We just have to create one brick out of a cube and create row using the array modifier. And we will create another row above with a slight offset. Now we can multiply these two rows upwards with another array modifier. And in order to get some variation we can make sh sure that each brick is a separate object. To do this we will separate by loose parts in the edit mode and then we set its origin of each cube to its geometry. And in the last step we can use the randomized transform method and tweak its parameters a bit for a decent result. And additionally we can join all meshes together. We will also add a chain and stairs using the array modifier again. And as you can see, the array modifier helps a lot to save much time. And before I start to add proper textures to the scene, we need to shade smooth all meshes and enable the auto smooth option. So now to texturing. Usually I make textures myself using substance and photos. However, since most people don't have access to substance, we will use for this project four textures which I downloaded from textures.com and this will also be the only resource which will be from the internet and not made by ourselves. So now we can create new materials with our new textures and we can assign them to our objects. And which material an object receives is up to your preferences and you can also assign more than one material to an object if you select its face and assign the material to the faces you want in your object. While adding the tiles texture, I decided to add some tile meshes for the bridge. For this, we need to subdivide the plane in the same pattern as the texture and extrude some random selected faces out. And the remaining faces can be deleted. At this point, you can now export your scene to Godot or any other game engine you like. However, you can also iterate the assets one more time or add even more details to the scene. Of course, you can also replace your block out with assets you bought, for instance, from an asset store. In my case, I export everything as one big 
.gltf file and import it to GUDU4 alpha 8. In GUDU we open our gltf file and firstly we want to add some materials. Since all materials will share the same shader we quickly write one. For that we create a new shader material with a custom script and for this script we only need a sampler 2D variable which contains our main texture. And then we will assign our texture to all necessary outputs like the albedo, normal map and roughness output. For the metal material we assign our metal texture to the albedo and roughness output of our already existing metal material which we exported from Blender. We also need to make sure that the value of the metallic is set to 1. In the next few steps we will assign our materials to each object with its correct texture. In order to attract focus on a platform, we will add a spotlight and try to light the scene after the concept art. For that we can use a yellowish color with enabled shadows on our spotlight. To access the environment lightning and the post-processing, we add an environment node. Here we first will enable SSAO and make sure that the light effect and the AO channel effect is set to 1. We can also enable SSIL and SDFGI, however, they are not adding as much to this certain scene compared to more complex open area environments. And be aware that especially SDFGI can have a huge impact on your performance. And we will enable volumetric fog and try to add a slight greenish tint for our scene. Moreover, I decided to use the ACES as tone map, but you can choose any other tone map you like. For the green smoke of the concept art, we have the option to use particles but I rather want to show you how to achieve a similar effect with the Vog Volume node. So we add a Vog Volume node as a child and create a new Vog material. However, we will convert this to a shader material. And there we need to change the density texture variable from sampler 3D to sampler 2D. So we can add Godot's built-in noise texture there. In the Vog function, we will now project our noise in the UVW from the dot XY axis and one more time from the dot ZY axis. If we now plug in the noise texture, we can see our VOG in the environment. Make sure that the density of the VOG in the world environment is less compared to the VOG volumes node density. In order to make the VOG move, we need to add the time variable to the UVW in the density output. Then you can play around a bit with the parameters for a result you prefer like color or noise texture pattern. And do not forget to set the VOG shape to world so our entire environment is affected by the VOG volume. Now we add a particle system to create fire. This is not in the concept art but I think this fits well in the scene and can emphasize the bridge. For this we add a particle child node with a new process material. For the draw pass we will use a quad shape with a custom shader. For this shader we will create two sampler 2D variables. One for Godot's built-in noise texture and another one for a mask texture which we will create in GIMP. Before that we will assign our main texture to the albedo and alpha output with its corresponding color channels. In GIMP we create a new white layer and use the vignette option to create a circle. 
There are many ways to create a circle in GIMP, but I prefer this one. As soon as we are finished with the circle, we use the color to alpha function to remove the black color in order to end up with a white color gradient which is circular. Now we can add our texture to our shader as well as the noise texture. To the noise we will add to its UVs the build in time variable in order to have a scrolling noise texture. And then we will multiply this value to our albedo output. We also require the particle to face the camera. To achieve this we use the built in billboard code from a converted material and add it to our vertex function. Then we add a vector4 color variable to colorize our flame and add a color gradient to our particle material. Moreover, we can change the scale with a curve and tweak the velocity of the flame particles. And then we can add our newly created flame into our main scene. So, and now we made it to the end of this video. Our scene is now complete and looks similar to our artwork. This video was very technical unlike my other videos and I also want to note that this scene was made in just 3 hours. Of course it could have been done even faster but this video was not supposed to be a speedrun but rather to show you some insights for the upcoming GoGoDo Jam. I would also like to emphasize Nikoto's upcoming video for shaders if you want to learn more about them. It also would make me happy if you could leave a like for this video and subscribe. Moreover, if you guys would be interested in a separate time-lapse video for this scene, please let me know in the comments. So thank you very much for watching and take care, goodbye.